It's the 10th anniversary of the Model Railway Exhibition in Brentwood, and Dennis Rockard, a keen railway enthusiast, investigates. come along to the Mid-Essex Model Railway Club to look at their 10th annual exhibition. It's an exhibition where you've got lots of layouts and you can just feast your eyes on lots of model trains. Model trains? Well, if you thought it was just a Hornby 00 train charging round a, a track on a bit of hardboard, forget it, because what you've got here is line-side furniture and model engineering of the highest degree possible. Now, take a look at this, for example. Now, you wouldn't believe that that was a model, but it could be, indeed, a, a model of a great western locomotive just shunting its way into a small country station. For a lot of the engineers here, it's not just a question of trains to run on tracks, it's the line-side furniture. By line-side furniture, of course, we mean the trees, the buildings, and those little bits of green which you might think are grass, but in fact are probably bits of coloured polystyrene on the trees. Well, they can be anything from uh, bits of old uh, plant life to uh, more bits of plastic. It's the art, if you like, of the impossible. known as Nobby, by the way, little engine, and it's a pride and joy of uh, Roger Kingston, I believe. That's right, yes. Roger, what exactly is this a model of? It's a model of a Great Eastern tram engine, as used on the docks, quaysides in East Anglia, and also, of course, on the famous Whiz Beach and Upwell tram uh, railway in uh, Cambridgeshire. Now, this whole model must have taken a great deal of research to put together. Uh, yes, yes, uh, sure, sure. It uh, does require looking at uh, research material, um, either general, general um, books or um, research from uh, other sources. Now, the, the, when you put the model together, is it a model of a particular station or is it a, a, a station that could have been, perhaps? This one's a station that could have been, uh, to the extent that they did, in fact, have a ceremony on this spot at Westerfield in about 1902. Um, they had all the gentry down there having a grand old time, cutting the first sod, etc. But uh, they never actually laid any track. In fact, uh, this part of the line was never um, built on at all. Uh, the uh, company ran out of money and in fact had to sell the land that they bought to put the railway on. Now the traction engine itself, or rather the uh, uh, the steam tram, would that have been steam or would it have been diesel? Definitely steam. Definitely yes, steam. Yes, it would have had a normal boiler in with mo motion underneath, as per a normal steam engine. But because of the nature of the tramway, it was required that all the motion be encased and also the boiler be encased because it had to run around um, on public roads. Oh, I see. So this line actually react, went just as a normal tram, but on normal roads? Th that particular tr locomotive was built to run on a tramway which would run alongside the normal road, yes. Because we've come full circle now with the uh, Ducklands Light Railway. We've got a tram car which uh, is using old railway track and also can use the roads if necessary. That, that's right, yes. yes. The rapid transit system, yes. Now, what makes you build a, a layout like this? What is the driving force that makes you do it? I don't know. <laughs> I think the classic answer to that one is I was born like it. <laughs> I mean, this isn't a, a standard rail gauge, is it? It's, it's an unusual one. It's, it is a standard rail gauge um, in the sense that uh, it was um, the standard, perhaps in our father's, grandfather's time, when the propulsion was clockwork. Ah. 
This is a famous double O then, was it? O gauge. O gauge. O -gauge. Yes, o -gauge. Yeah. yes, like the old Hornby clockwork winder, and this is the same size, but on a much finer standard. Anybody who's ever taken a photograph will know how difficult it is to uh, do little things like keep it in focus or even uh, catch it at the right speed. And model photography is even worse. That needs true dedication. Well, one man who knows about photography, and indeed more than most, is Lenny Real. Lenny is not only a press photographer, but also is a, a very capable model photographer. Lenny, let's look at some of the pictures you've got here, and wonderful colour pictures of model locomotives. Uh, when did it all start for you? Uh, well, about 1978. A friend of mine built a layout and um, wrote an article for a magazine and wanted some photographs to go with it. And uh, he said, well, seeing as I took photographs for the paper, I should know how to take photographs of this, which is something I've never done before. So we tried it. it seemed to come out all right. Magazines uh, were interested and it's really just gone on from there. Now, of course, with a model, of course, it's all under your control. You don't have to wait for something to happen, do you? But uh, do you take a long time to sort of get the lighting right and uh, get all the models in the, the right position? Yes, uh, I usually sort out the lighting and and leave the models to the chance that really made them and built them. Let's look at some of these models, because if we can start by looking at this one, this is a, a, an alpine scene, isn't it? That's right, yes. Um, it's a layout built by an architect out of fact in uh, Beaconsfield and uh, used uh, God knows how many hundred weight of poly for the, for the snow and uh, as you can see trains and buildings all lit up, miniature bolts. I must say the mountains behind look quite realistic but uh, is that a photograph? Uh... No, that, he painted those himself. Uh, and, you w and you wouldn't tell which was the painted and which was polystyrene? Uh, that's right, this is the actual poly filler one here and then it, it, he's merged it in with a painting here. Absolutely amazing. The one below it, of course, is uh, is a rather more familiar object. It's a South End Line train. That's right, yes. This is um, an O-gauge layout belonging to the Ilford and West Essex Club. Um, uh, this is all for handmade uh, mm. models. Let's move along, because I can see we've got Grizzly, Nigel Grizzly's A4. Um, fake steam coming out of the top of it, perhaps? Yes, that's right. Um, it's, a, I say, a form of cotton wool. It's not strictly cotton wool. It's, uh, it's an odd sort of stuff. I, I greatly really find it, but uh, it took me about an hour to get there, just right. Well, now, these three here are magnificent, uh, Lenny, because it, it's, it's almost like a painting, isn't it? That's right, yes. Now, this is, um, once again, it's a chap that comes from Folkestone in Kent. He is a um, carpenter, handyman type, and uh, I think he's got a real eye for detail mm. and, and how it should be done. Well, now, Lenny, this is magnificent, isn't it? It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a train going through a snowdrift. Well, this was done um, in a specific order. The magazine wanted a, a, a Christmas edition cover, and um, so we came up with this idea, and it's really uh, a layout covered with um, aerial snow so, uh, soap flakes. A aerial soap flakes? <laughs> yeah, to, to create the, uh, the snow effect. And once again, this um, sort of cotton wool snow. And, and weeds from the garden, which had died off to make it look like the trees in winter. Yeah, absolutely amazing. You wouldn't believe you were into this amount of trickery. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite right, yes. So, of course, when it was published, you'd have the logo of the magazine. That's right, the name. Uh, that's that's, that's right, bottom, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Words on the bottom, what's inside the magazine, and uh, at the top, the, the name of the magazine. Lenny, what satisfaction do you get uh, out of taking these sort of photographs as opposed to your normal day-to-day -day work? Well, that's it. Uh, it's entirely different. Um, from my normal day-to-day -day work, and uh, it's, it's very relaxing to me in that respect. Um, all the different types of lighting, colour film, um, I can use all the different ones. Do them outdoor, do them indoors, it's all different. Lenny, thanks a lot for uh, sharing your work with us. Pleasure. And uh, next time I look at a, a Rari magazine cover and I see a model loco, it could well be your photograph. That's right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
wonderful. It's one of those uh, real steam locomotives that chugs along. And I'm going to have a word of its driver before he uh, moves off with another set of passengers. Tell me, um, what's the name, first of all? Brian Craig. Brian, did you build this? Yes, indeed. Isn't she beautiful? What is she? Yeah. Well, it's a freelance kit based on a um, Victorian engine, really, an 040. Oh, she's certainly, you're certainly having fun hauling the kids backwards. Oh, you? yes, yeah, it's doing its work at the moment. Do you yeah. often get a chance to take it out and let it roll? Um, about once a month during the summer, yeah. yeah. Where's, what's the longest track distance you've ever had it on? Um, well, at Chelmsford Modern Engineering Club, they've got a continuous circuit there, and um, you can just keep on going. All the while there's coal and water there, you keep on going with it. I suppose if you were to scale that up into... Uh, its real size, mm -hmm. it would probably carry more than it was actually originally designed for. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. And you have to stoke it up with coal as well. Yes, yeah, the coal goes in. Oh, I see, yes, you've got uh, the coal box. The coal goes in there, the firebox is in there. Yeah. Um, that's the water level for your boiler. Oh, it's yes. It's jumping up and down. You have to keep that up constantly all the time. And that's the steam pressure in the boiler. Good Lord, just like a real loco. That's well, right. I, I see you've got a full load of passengers. Yeah, well, we're off again. There's yeah. no peace for the wicked. <laughs> oh, it's time. Tough being a driver, that isn't is it? Indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wait for the whistle. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, cheerio, Brian. It's time now to meet the uh, chairman of the Mid-Essex Model Rowing Club. That's Nigel Bowditch, and Nigel's the man responsible for this Model Rowing exhibition. Nigel, a very proud day to look at all those lovely layouts behind us. It's very good indeed. It, the, the exhibition's exceeded all our expectations. It's uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears putting on something like this, and uh, we've had over 1,300 people through the door. It has been really very, very good. Very now, pleasing. Now, this is your 10th anniversary year, right? That is correct, yes. So how did it all start? It started with a group of people involved in another railway society um, who didn't actually want to, to take over a building as such, but ended up doing so. So we now have our own clubhouse. Where's that? This is based at Ingate Stone. Our clubhouse is, a, is an original railway building. It is the old Crossing Keeper's Cottage, built I in the 1840s. To, I used to know the Crossing Keeper down here, Gus. Ah, well, you yes. know him. I didn't know him, but uh, oh, Gu Gus is going back a few years, obviously. Anybody who, who knows Ingerstone will know Gus. Uh, I've probably met him. I did meet an old boy who used to be signalman there many years ago. It could well be the same one. Oh, you've yes. got his cottage, have you? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. So, uh, and that, that's where you've got the various layouts? We have the one main club layout, the Swallows Cross layout, mm -hmm. which is, we, we keep down there. Plus, all, we store all our bits and pieces there for when we go out to exhibitions, and when we take the layout out and about. Happiness is train-shaped, and uh, wearing the sweater is uh, Jazz. Jazz, tell me something about the layout. What is it? Well, it's a branch line for a start. It's based on East Anglian practice of the 1950s, and uh, the scale is 3 sixteenths of an inch to the foot, S gauge, which is the only all-imperial scale. It comes in between OO and O gauge, the layout itself is 16 feet by 8. It's intended to go in my attic. Good Lord. And uh, that basically is it. It's a branch line. It's modelled in its entirety from the, the terminus down to the junction. So that instead of these losing the trains into the traditional fiddle yard, we've got the junction at this end, and we can then turn the train round and send it back 
so we've got the whole of the branch line on the model. The thing I like about it, Jazz, and you're not going to like me for this, but I think on this particular layout, the, the trains are of secondary importance. It's the, uh, the line-side furniture. I mean, the trees you've got, for example, in that little forest over there are fantastic. What are they made of? Believe it or not, they're made from the hydrangea bush outside my back door. I've got a huge lace cap hydrangea, which has something like two or three hundred flowers on it every year. And I snip off the little, the, well, the, there's some large outer flowers which you snip off, and you're left with a, a tight little bunch in the middle, which looks not unlike a cow parsley head. And uh, you stick them into the, the ground of this layout, the, the, the scenic contours, is expanded polystyrene. And you can stuff this, these things into it, rather like a woman would stuff flowers into a block of oasis, uh -huh. making flower arrangements. And that's basically what the um, forest is. It's an arrangement of dry flower heads. And regretfully, that's all we've got for you for model trains. I hope you've enjoyed our visits here to the Teachers Training College in Sirius Hall Lane for this 10th anniversary exhibition of the Med Essex Model Railway Club. Regretful because for you it's uh, no more trains, but not for me. Me? Well, I'm going to play with the big train over there, so uh, see you around.